Uh, chapter 15. We're going to cover this whole chapter today. Chemical equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium is an important concept in chemistry, and what it involves is two opposing processes occurring at the same rate. So these are two opposite things that are happening at the same time and in the same, um, at the same rate. So a freeway is an example. Here we have a picture of a freeway and we have cars going, let's say they're going north, and we have cars coming south. And the cars are going north at the same rate as they're coming south. And so if we looked at the total number of cars at the south end and the north end of this road, we would see that the total number of cars is the same. But it's not the same cars because cars are moving from one to the other. And so this is an analogy for a dynamic equilibrium, which might be something like this, N2O4 is in equilibrium with 2NO2. And here we use this double-headed arrow to indicate that the reaction is proceeding in both directions. This concept of chemical equ equilibrium implies something um, that has sameness and constancy. Um, a chemical equilibrium, I'm sorry, a chemical system is at equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So we need to think about what affects the rate of a chemical reaction. And what is, what do we mean by rate of a chemical reaction? Well, what is the rate of speed of a car on the freeway? It's the distance traveled per unit time, right? So rate is a measure of how fast the car is going. The rate of reaction is the measure of how fast the reaction proceeds. It's the amount of reactant that changes to product in a given period of time. So it could be a number of moles per second or something like that. We can control reaction rates if we understand the factors that influence them. And this is one of those aspects of chemistry that's actually very practical. If you are in industry and you're trying to, um, you know, you need a chemical reaction to occur to produce your product, then you're going to care a great deal about how fast that reaction proceeds. So we're going to look at the th um, things that affect how fast the reaction occurs. To do this, we have to talk about collision theory. Collision theory explains um, some of the things we observe about reactions between molecules or atoms. And the idea here is that chemical reactions occur through collisions between the particles that are reacting. In order for the two molecules to react, they have to actually run into each other. They have to be in proximity to each other. That collision also has to happen with enough energy for the reaction to proceed and form the products. So if there's not enough energy, nothing's going to happen. That collision energy is going to be related to the velocity of the particles. If you think about two people walking down the street and they bump into each other, if they're just strolling along, is there going to be a lot of energy involved in that collision? No. What if you have people racing full speed and they run into each other? Is that going to hurt? That's going to hurt. There's going to be a lot of energy involved in that. So the faster the particles are moving, the more energy they have when they run into each other. We've talked about kinetic molecular theory of gases and how gas particles move in straight lines until they run into things. Now we're going to talk a little more about their velocities or their speeds. We talk about temperature, and temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. But it's average, okay? If you talk about the average age of people in this classroom, I don't know what it might be, but maybe it's, I don't know, 25 or something. You have some people who are older and some people who are younger. And you may not actually have anyone who's the average age. When we talk about a velocity of a molecule, the average velocity, there are also particles moving faster and particles moving slower. So there's a wide distribution or variation of velocities. So if the fast-moving particles run into each other, they're going to have a high-energy collision. 
and that's going to lead to a reaction and a product. And if you have the slower ones running into each other, you're going to get a low energy collision, and they're just going to bump into each other and go, eh, and go on their way. They're not going to react. Most chemical reactions have what we call an activation energy. This is an energy barrier that must be overcome for the reaction to proceed. And that activation energy um, might involve breaking some bonds. So you have two molecules, and in order for them to react, they need to break apart. Well, it takes energy to break those particles. And so the energy of that collision has to be enough to break the molecules apart. So what we find is that the factors that influence the rate of a reaction are the same as the factors that affect the number of high energy collisions that occur in a given unit of time. So let's look at how concentration affects the rate of a reaction. Here we have an illustration. Um, in the top panel, we have a low concentration. There's just a few particles in here. And as we go down, the number of particles in that same box increases. Now, when you have just a few molecules in a container, or maybe just a few people in a room, and they're walking around, are there going to be a lot of collisions or a few collisions? Just a few collisions, right? And as you put more and more particles into that box or more and more people into the room, they're going to bump into each other more, right? The collision has to occur for a reaction to occur. So are we going to get more reaction, faster reaction with low concentration or high? High concentration. When you increase the concentration of the reactants, the rate of the reaction increases because the the frequency of collisions will increase. So let's look at this high, high, um, high rate of reaction situation. When these particles collide, this is the illustration up here. We've got one of those white ones and one of the blue ones, and they come apart and they form two of these molecules that have each one white and one blue ball in them, HI. So H2 plus H, I'm sorry, H2 plus I2 gives two HI. As these are reacting, what happens to the concentration of the H2 and the I2? Does it go up, down, stay the same? Well, if this one and this one run into each other, they're going to form product, right? And then they aren't going to be reactants anymore. Let's see what magic I can work here. So those two guys collided with each other. They're gone. And then maybe these two guys reacted, and these two. What's happening to the concentration as they react? It's going down. If the concentration goes down, what happens to the rate of the reaction? It also decreases. Does that make sense? So you have two particles. They run into each other. They react. Now they are a product. They're still hanging around. They didn't disappear like I made them disappear. But they're not reactants anymore. And so you have fewer reactant particles. The concentration is lower. When the concentration is lower, the rate of the reaction is lower because there are fewer collisions. Question? Isn't that kind of like when a piece of wood's on fire, the wood gets smaller, the fire gets smaller? Yes. Yeah, when a log burns, as the log gets smaller, the fire gets smaller. Any questions about this idea? These, the, the idea of the concentration affecting the rate of reaction and how it affects that, if you can think about what's going on, about the particles colliding, and okay, they're going to collide more frequently when there's a whole bunch of them in, in a small area, right? And when they collide more frequently, they're going to react <coughs> faster. Then you can reason it out in just a few seconds, really, instead of trying to remember some stuff that just doesn't seem to make any sense. So that's concentration effect on reaction rate. Temperature can affect reaction rate as well. So here we have these three boxes again, same reaction. Now, 
All three of these have the same concentration, the same number of particles. But this is at a low temperature, and this one's at a high temperature, the one in the middle's in the middle. And what did we say about how fast particles move at higher temperatures? They move faster or slower? They move faster. It's like barefoot people on a hot beach. They're going to move quickly because they don't want to burn their feet. So here we have high velocity, moving faster. What does that do to the number of collisions? The collision, the, the amount of collisions increases and the energy of the collisions increases. So if we think about a room this size and you've got people in it and they're walking around, they're going to bump into each other, but they're not going to bump into each other very hard and probably not that frequently. If you have the same number of people in the same room and they're running, why did your mom tell you not to run in the house? Because you were going to bump into people and things, right? If we've got people running in this room, they're going to run into each other more often. Each collision is a potential reaction. And also, when they do run into each other, it's going to be higher energy. It'll be more likely to cause a reaction. So higher temperature does what to the rate of the reaction? It increases it. So higher temperature, faster reaction. So this summarizes. Reaction rates generally increase with increasing reactant concentration. Reaction rates generally increase with increasing temperature. And reaction rates generally decrease as the reaction proceeds. Why is that? Because the, the concentration of the reactants is going down. So as the reaction goes on, it, it tends to get slower. Yes? Um, pressure can affect rate of reaction, especially if gases are involved. But we're not going to talk about that just yet. Any other questions? So, let's look at this question. In a chemical reaction between two gases, well, here we go with the pressure. You would expect that increasing the pressure of the gases would probably increase the reaction rate, decrease the reaction rate, or not affect the reaction rate. So we're going to take a, two gases in a container, and we're going to increase the pressure. What does that do to how close the particles are to each other? It makes them closer, right? What's that going to do to the number of collisions? It will increase the number of collisions. What will that do to the rate of the reaction? It will increase the reaction rate. So that's how you think about questions like that. So A, increase the reaction rate. Any questions?